Hello and welcome to this start of a very, very interesting series, how to build a DAP in 10 steps. I am Cryptosi. I have been in crypto since 2012. Uh, I started this Smart Reach channel with a couple other guys who have since departed. And my history is that I was a team member in PIVX. I then left, and since I've left, I left around 2020, I have created numerous dApps. So that is what we do here at CryptoCDAO. We create dApps. And here we're going to have a uh, short series to kind of show the main uh, steps that we take in creating a dApp. Obviously, not every dApp is the same. You may have steps in this that you do not take. And there may be other steps that you do take. If there's anything that you think I've said that is against your beliefs, please feel free to leave it in the comments below so that I can ignore it. But the YouTube algorithm will be happy. Or you could join us in Discord where we can actually discuss these things. A uh, link to that will also be in the description. So without any further to do, let's get started. So this is the first of uh, the series. And the series really runs off the back of this blog post, which I posted about two weeks ago. Uh, right, so what are the 10 steps? Uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you exactly what the 10 steps are right now, so you don't have to watch to the end, you don't have to do any of that other nonsense. The 10 steps are uh, the idea, the team, the brand, the logic document, the wireframes, the Figma, the smart contracts in the back end, integration, testing, and then launch. So in this episode, we are going to focus on the idea, but I will briefly go over all the other points because this episode will be longer than the others. Others I expect will be about 10 to 15 minutes. This one will be about 20 to 25 minutes. So the idea. Right, so the idea is the cornerstone of the entire process. Um, while ideas are easy to come by, uh, finding good ones is not so common. At this stage, what you really want to do is focus on product market fit and feasibility. Product market fit is basically building something that the market actually wants so that your product fits in the market. That's quite difficult when you're building uh, web-free, decentralized applications or things like that because the market is not really formed around these products yet. So it's a little bit more difficult than building, I don't know, legacy applications. Also, feasibility is another thing which is quite difficult because the industry is always progressing. So what you can't do today, you may able you may be able to easily do tomorrow. Or something that might be difficult today, like um, digital IDs uh, in a decentralized form. They're, quite, they're still kind of difficult now, but in about a year's time, they'll probably be quite easy. They'll probably be a standout uh, solution for you to use to integrate into your decentralized application. So that's feasibility and product market fit. Those are the two things you really want to worry about the most when coming up with your idea. For the sake of this series, we will be building out a DAP. So this series will build out a DAP. We will be doing a case study. By the time we finish this video, the DAP will be complete. Now this DAP, we're going to be building it together. So currently, I'm only at the idea stage. So there is no... Um, here's what I've done earlier, or here's one shiny, great thing with all these followers behind me that's made the product actually work. Nope, you're going to watch somebody build that from the ground up. That that we are building, the idea, is Sunak Memes. Uh, it's going to be a simple meme competition page where people can upload their memes and the most popular memes. But we'll, we'll go back to that in a little while because that is the focus of this entire episode the next thing you need to look at is team some people might put team after they've created their logic document i put team before i i guess team can split so you can do team at number two and another bit of team at number 4.5 and here's why the reason why i put team first i put team before brand is because you're going to need to find a designer so your designer will be a part of your team your designer will design your logo preferably your brand you will also or should be able to change your wireframes into actual figments. So actually design the app. That way it stays in keeping with the brand, 
which stays in keeping with the whole ethos of the project. So that's your team. You also want to have a developer. You also want to have a maybe business development guy if you've got enough funding or if the if the tokenomics are correct that you can find somebody that will do it maybe part-time for a percentage of the actual tokens. It just depends on your tokenomics. But those are the type of people you want. You may also want somebody who's going to take the lead on testing. Testing is a very important part, which we will cover later, but those are the overall team members. If you check out CryptoC team, CryptoC.team, you should be able to find suitable members, even for your own team. Um, but that's another video. I'll put a link to it in the description. Next, we come to the brand. Now, building a brand is essential. Um, you work with your designers, you build a brand. The, a, the, a strong brand uh, can communicate to your audience what your app does, how it does it, and who it's for. So if you have a particular demographic in mind that you want to use your app or your DAC, then your whole brand in it needs to keep that in mind. I like for my brands, uh, for this one, because it's quite a simple project, depending on how big the project is or how much you can focus on certain users for this one i'm going to have a very generic brand so i'm just going to have a brand and a brand guide strong brand strong brand guide oh sorry simple brand strong brand guide means that the brand doesn't have an ethos of its own if you don't have an ethos then you can't exclude people it's just what it is right so that's what i'm that's what i'm going to do with this project if you're doing something else maybe a privacy project or maybe a charitable organization or something else, you're going to want to have a different ethos or you're going to actually want the ethos behind your, your brand. Um, it's completely up to you at that point, but we'll go through that in the third video of this series. Next is the logic document. This is by far the most important step of the entire process. Um, a strong logic document just makes everything else so easy. Some people call logic documents other things. Logic document is just the word I use. If you've got other names for logic document, please leave it in the description below or come to our Discord. So what is a logic document? Logic document is like a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide to what happens in your app. User logs on, user does this, computer does that, user then does this, computer shows the user that, user can decide if he wants to do this, that, or the other, the computer then does this, that, and the other, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what a logic document does. It also sets out where your incentives are, why do you want, why do you think people will do this, that, or the other, why do you think this will be attractive to people. All of those things are all contained within the logic document. So not only does it say exactly what the software is doing, but you want to include language around why the software is doing it. Just so that when you move on to things like wireframing, you can say, well, this is happening because of such and such. So if I move it, I will be removing such and such. It makes it easier to decide what you're doing next. So that's the logic document. The logic document is essential for the next two or three steps next two steps maybe um, in particular so the next step after you've got your logic document so you know exactly how what that is going to work exactly what it's going to do you then come to wireframing now luckily for me i've got a degree in computer science so my um i forget the word for it now but my final big my dissertation my dissertation was around user interfaces and user experience and UI and UX. So for me, I can create these wireframes. This is possibly the most niche part, the most difficult part, and the part that I would say in crypto is the most overlooked. Good wireframing is supposed to do... We'll, we'll, we'll cover this in much greater depth on the wireframes episode. Well, good wireframe is supposed to give uh, new users... Uh, familiarity. So a new user is supposed to immediately use your software and kind of already know what they're supposed to be doing next. A great place to see this in action is on Android applications. So you know like tablet games and stuff that you get for your children? They always have amazing UX, which 
is why our children can just use them, even when they can't read. That's what intuitiveness is. Um, there are ways to achieve that. We won't go into that now. We'll go into that in the future. But once you've done your wireframes, you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. This is a wonderful wireframe, which I've done for MC Team. Um, it includes, even includes features which won't be ready in the, in the first version, but you should always include them in your wireframe. Um, what's happening, where, and why. And that is enough to give a designer the um, understanding of what should be being built. And here we have what the designer will build. This Figma is not for the wireframe I just showed, which I just realized is probably not the most sensible thing to do. I should probably show the Figma for that other wireframe or show the wireframe for this Figma. Anyway, Figma is a software. This actual design process, you may give it another name. I just call it the Figma stage because as long as I've been doing it, we've always been using Figma. Figma is just the software which designers use to show you these mock-ups, essentially, of what your final app will look like. Um, expect, to spend, expect to spend around $200 for a good Figma design. You can spend a lot more. You can spend a lot less. It's a big open world. Um, if you go and get a designer from Eastern Europe, you're going to be doing a lot less. If you get a designer from the West Coast of the United States, you're going to pay 10 times this. Um, I wouldn't particularly say one is better than the other. What I would say, though, is that when you do pay more money, what you are expecting really is for some of this wireframing to be done or altered whilst you're doing it. If you've done the wireframing yourself, for me personally, this big mistake is um, it shouldn't be that expensive because all they're really doing is pretty enough what you've really done. And they've got a brand guide already to, to send them on their way. So they know what colors they should be using, et cetera, et cetera. I think I've got an example of a brand guide that's covered. I'll show you in that, in that video. So you've got your Figma. So now that that is really coming to life. Now you know what it's going to look like. Anybody who has used Vulcan Pad before will know. This is basically what Vulcan Pad looks like when you go in there to go and uh, contribute to a project. I think that's been changed to contribute. Things do change from this point, by the way, isn't it? So that's just what the app will look like. Then we go and start looking at doing the completing the smart contracts in the back end. Now, the smart contracts in the back end can be completed nice and quickly and easily if your uh, logic document was really granular in detail. Can't stress enough how much detail you want to go into with your logic. I will show an example of a logic document when we get to that episode but for now obviously i'll, I'll just do a brief overview smart contracts um a small thing if you want to build something on evm you're going to need a developer with solidity experience if you're going to build something on uh, solana for example you're going to need a developer with rust experience there are different languages that developers use a lot of developers can program in a lot of languages depending on the complexity of your project you may want somebody with more experience. Um, what can be the potential pitfalls? These are the things you will go over in your idea and your logic. What are the potential pitfalls? What can go wrong? If you're holding a lot of money in smart contracts, you're going to want an experienced developer in that language on that platform. You don't want to hold a lot of money with somebody who's never programmed in Rust before, but they're experts in solidity because they may miss something out. Um, if you haven't got the money to have audits done, which most projects honestly don't, then you could be flying defenseless for a little while until you have. Okay. Um, how do you trust developers? We'll go over that when we get there, but you can use uh, for, uh, for platforms like Um Upwork, I would say is another good place to find good developers. Um, I generally find them just scouring Discord, but I am I get messaged by developers about maybe four or five times a week um, looking for work. So it does depends, right? Um, integration. Integration is the step of combining your Figma designs and your smart contracts, creating an actual website 
and locking the three together. So by the time you finish integrating, you've got something which you are ready to pull out. It's ready to be used from the start to the end. All of the features are there and they can all be tested. This does happen. Eight and nine do tend to happen in uh, tandem, like one, you do to eight, then you go to nine. And then after you finish nine, often go back to eight in order to fix things that weren't working properly or to make things work better. Then you go back and test them again. Then you go back to eight, you might add new features, which you hadn't quite implemented yet. Then you go back and test them. Eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine. Whilst you're going through eight and nine, that is still, I would say, alpha. When you're coming towards the end, you can start to call it beta and then you launch. Some people do launch and they call it beta. I, I'm one of those people. What you're basically saying is, I don't want to take full responsibility. Um, it's a, it's a bit of a cop out, I guess. Um, also, I guess you're saying that I'm still developing this. There's still more things that need to be added, but I tend to think that goes without saying. So unless we're going to call everything beta on here until the end of the world, I don't know. That's something you can argue about with yourselves or in the comment section below. I think it's quite a good discussion. Finally, you launch. Now, this is the part that I can help you with the least. Uh, social media strategy, marketing, all of those things. I am not good at. Platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram are great for you to get your word out there. If you're good with those platforms, um, build a landing page, which should cost you no more than $100. You can get your landing page done by the same person who done your Figma. They are familiar with your brand. They are familiar with what type of style you like and what you want. And they generally can create landing pages. Somebody can design a, a brand guide and a application. They can definitely design a landing page. I wouldn't personally pay any more than $100 to get a landing page design. Um, uh, maybe another $100 to have it implemented. Maybe. Um, but... I'd say 200 Maybe this this might be a little bit on the cheap side, uh, which should cost no more than... Uh, what I should say is could cost as little as $100, I should say. Because, of course, if you want to pay more, then pay more. There are some web designers who are brilliant at it. Obviously, the more you pay, the, the better it is for your product. And a horrible landing page does a project can submit. Um, and I've had some pretty horrible landing pages. So there you have it. 10 successful steps to... As steps to a successful bat launch. Uh, next, I'll create the videos, which we're doing now, and a case study, which we're going to do to demonstrate how the process pans out in real time. Stay tuned. Right, so we're going to do this in real time. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to sit down and, and type these all out. I've done this before, but we're going to do one step. We're going to upload the video. Then I'm going to do the next step. Then I'm going to upload the video, and so on, so on. So first of all, we do this. I like to use Google Docs. The reason why I like to use Google Docs is because all of my team members can access the document. In fact, I will put a link to the document in the description. So even you can go and look at the document. Um, the team members can access it. I like to give them commenting rights. If it's somebody who I've worked with lots of times before and I trust that they won't get into the document and start jacking around, I will give them editing rights. But generally, I give people commenting rights. Uh, you, the viewer, you just get viewing rights. Uh, right, so overview. Sunak memes, interactive, uh, competitive, marketplace for memes, meme lovers, and meme creators. The overall mission for the DAP will be to bring creators and communities together with a simple to understand and engaging competition to create the best memes for a given project. Memes can take the shape of images or videos uh, later in the, the life cycle of that. So we're going to start off with just images. As we go further in, um, for maybe RV2, we will add videos. The videos uh, provide some different um, problems. The video format will need to be the same. The, the, um, the recovery of the video will need to be the same. If we're not storing the videos ourselves, preferably we'll store them on the another decentralized video platform where we can retrieve them quickly. All of that is um, we'll look at really in depth when we get there. Probably when you do it in the logic document this time around, actually. 
okay, we then set ourselves some goals, um, create an open and engaging platform, allow anyone to vote on the memes they like, prize pool should be held in a decentralized smart contract on-chain and verifiable. Um, that is that you can see the address where the prize pool is for any particular meme contest. The meme contest will be, for example, you've got a meme coin like PopCat. And PopCat might have a $300 prize pool for memes. Uh, everyone can upload their own memes. I can upload my own meme, make my own little image. I think it's funny, upload it. People can then vote on it as good or not good. If it wins, then I get the money. Okay. Uh, the prize pool should be held in the central of smart contract on chain of verifiable. It uh, should work on Solana and Base. So, the reason why I wanted to work on Solana and Base, those are the two main places where mean tokens reside. Uh, I will need different developers for each. So, I will need a developer who is good on Solana, who is good on Rust, and developer is good on uh, Solidity. I probably, because of the type of this project, because of how simple the smart contracts are, I could probably get away with having one developer do both. Um, allow means to be in image or video. Right. Then we have the specifications. Now, this is nowhere near as detailed as we will have them in the logic document. This is a very, very, very broad overview. Okay. Uh, see that means, uh, here's the specs, right? See that means all work by allowing token holders to vote for memes that have been presented and entered into a regular competition. Each entered meme will have to pay a tiny entrance fee to avoid spam. That entrance fee might just be the network fee. Um, depends what network we're on, how much it costs. Now, this can be in the token of the project or in the network base token. If we have uh, a small entrance fee, what we might do is have a portion of that entered, add it to the prize pool, and a portion of that taken as a fee to DAO or wherever. Uh, the prize pool should be held by, oh, sorry, the means with the most votes when the timer stops, win prizes. There will be prizes of first, second, and third. All memes agree to all their images to be used freely. So if you add a meme to this meme contest, what you are saying is that I'm not trying to hold any rights over this meme. Now, you may not have the rights to this image to begin with. If you don't, then be prepared to get in trouble. Um, if you do, then you're, what you're saying is that you don't, don't uh, want to hold any rights moving forward. So... It's about your work, not about the origin of that imagery. So I don't know how that works. If you've got any um, ideas on it legally, then yeah, drop a comment down below. Um, users can open up a competition for a new token, but only one competition per token is allowed. So for example, there can't be two competitions for pop. Yeah, there can only be one. And that competition will be go. If you want to open up another one, you can't. But what you can do is add your prize money that you would add to the prize pool that's already there. So it consolidates. Um, you won't be able to start another one. There will be a smart contract which has a list of all of the contract addresses which already have, um, which already have like, projects going. You cannot have two. So you check and say, okay, is that contract address being held in there? Yes. It is, then you can't start another one. No, it's not. And once starts with it, send it is. Once uh, opening a competition has a fee, the first 100 competitions will be cheaper. So the fee will be cheap to start with so we can grab some traction. Once we've got traction, we will go up. Uh, the prizes will be given out 50% first, 35% second, 10% third, 5% fee will go to the DAO or the SUNAC holders, however it works, whichever chain it's on. If it's on EVM, it goes to the DAO. If it's on Solana, it goes to the SUNET. Uh, each different competition will be shown on its own page with the contract address for the project prominent and all other information gathered from the next screen up or similar information. A contract address is basically the ID that the network knows your meme token has. Every meme token has got its own contract address. Okay. Um, kind of kind of uh, complicated I guess if, you, if you're not familiar uh, if you are familiar it's quite straightforward it's just it's just the identifier for your project 
And along with that, it will also import some information from deck screener. It might be your website, uh, might be your Twitter, uh, it might be your um, Telegram, it might be an image of your logo, etc. There will be a few bits of information that we may be able to pull from either deck screener or some similar API offering service that we can then post out there that you know what, what project it is you're looking at. Uh, but the project address is the one that you really pay attention to because that is the one that proves that you're looking at the actual one and not a fake one. That's the unique identifier. Okay. Uh, images will have to adhere to certain image specs. So there has to be Twitter image size, 1600 or 900 and under one megabyte. We will put a link to an image converter so that you can reformat your images to the right size, just if you are moving them. Um, holders can hold of certain NFTs will be able to enter for free. We'll do that in partnerships, so that might move on and move off. If you hold a certain NFT, you might be able to enter for free for a certain month. Uh, if you don't, you can't. Um, that will be something that yeah. I didn't. Um, homepage will show a leaderboard of the projects with the largest prize pools and the addresses that have won the most in Seoul, EF, uh, Sunak, or Sunak. Uh, the homepage having a leaderboard works by incentivizing projects to give out bigger prizes. Obviously, the ones that are at the top of the leaderboard are going to be the ones that mean people want to enter. They're also going to be the one that people that are kind of just browsing look at and they might say, okay, this is a sign that project is strong because the meme um, pool is big. Entrants could choose whether or not they want to be contacted for further work at the time of upload. So when you enter, you can say, this is the person who entered, here's my contact details. Um, you can contact me and I will make more means for you away from this uh, vision. Milestones. So the milestones basically uh, make up the same as what we've just looked at, as what we'll be going through here. Every step I see as a milestone. Uh, often I'll have different milestones, but for the sake of this project and this video series, the milestones will be the same. The same things that went over, get a team, create a logic document, create wireframes, create Figma, uh, create smart contracts in the back end. Um, the back end part will be like the databases and things like that. However, they work. You want them to work in a decentralized way, but you may in parallel have them working in a centralized way because it's retrieval is quicker. Um, that's kind of complicated. So, um, so yeah, so then you would create a smart and then integrate, fully develop, then test, and then launch. All right. Okay. And that pretty much wraps it up. There is no logo here for this project. Like I said, we are literally doing this all building in public, which I quite enjoy. It makes building seem a little bit less lonely, I guess. Um, so hopefully by the time we get to branding, um, which will be after we've picked our team, which is what we're doing next, by the time we get to branding, we should have a nice logo here and a nice brand guide and all that good stuff. And then, then the, the project really starts to take shape. Uh, we may change the name of the project at that point as well. For now, it's called Sunak Memes. Um, I quite like that. I might put Sunak Memes. I might say a Kriposi DAO. Let's say, let's do it like that. And yeah, so there we have it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and all of that stuff. We've got in in just under 30 minutes, which I'm pleased with. I've actually had to record this episode in my uh, kitchen because something's up with my PC. I think I'm being targeted by hackers. Please share this with your friends. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe, all that other good stuff. Thank you for watching. Congratulations on making it to the end. I've been Griptosi. You've been beautiful. I will see you in the next one. Peace.